saw a tombstone there that said, he survived the sinking of the monitor. I said, oh, that's pretty disturbing. I was working at Channel 12 at the time. So I said, I think I'll do a story on this guy and then maybe write something about it. And I looked into it. His name was Francis Butts, Francis Bannister Butts. And he was buried uh, down by the water, by the Seacock River. So I looked into him, and sure enough, he was on the monitor. Uh, he, like a lot of the other boys, he was from East Providence, wanted to uh, just get in to be to get on an ironclad. That was a big thing, get on an ironclad. And so in 1862, he was on the monitor, and uh, it sank. And somehow, he kept a diary. And the diary I found in continuing the research was at the Rhode Island Historical Society Library. And it was written in pencil. And so, I don't know how he survived uh, the actual, we know he survived the sinking of the monitor, but I don't know how he was able to keep the diary going because it's the same. But at any rate, uh, in reading his writing, uh, he survived, <coughs> I don't know what the guys on the ship did, but he survived the sinking down in Hampton Roads in 1862. But uh, he also, a little cat that he had also survived, so he wrote all about that too. And at one point, he, he kept writing right up until the 1900s. He died in 1905. So maybe in the 1898 or so, he, he was writing. He had kept a diary of everything. And uh, then his son died. He was, I think, 32 or something like that. And it, and it was, it was very uh, poignant because he wrote in his diary, he said, uh, I now put down my pen forever. And he did. There wasn't one other thing written after he died. After his son died. He died in 1905, and it turns out that he was the postmaster in his province. But here's this postmaster, very on point, who survived the sinking of the monitor. One thing I found out about the monitor and the Merrimack battle is that the Merrimack was not the name of the ship at all. It was the Virginia. The Merrimack was the wooden version of the ship. And when the, the um, monitor became so infamous, about not being destroyed in battle, the Merrimack was made into a, an ironclad too, but it was called the Virginia. And I didn't know that after all the studying and all the years in school. I always thought it was a monitor on the Merrimack, and it probably still is. I haven't seen a recent history book in the schools, if they even teach much history. <coughs> but uh, it was the monitor and the, and the Virginia, if anyone ever says anything. You know, I don't know if that'd be a trivia question now. Uh, but anyway, that was one way of getting the story of Francis Bannister Butts. I managed to get a picture of him. Uh, if you take photographs of anybody in uh, Swan Point, you've got to get permission from the family. And one story I did that I had trouble getting permission from was a fellow, uh, I saw his stone, it had the five Olympic rings on it. And I said, well, this could be a good story. So I checked it out, and his name was Dudley Richards. Dudley Shaw Richards. And he was a, a member of the Olympic uh, ice skating team. And he was from Barrington. And he went to Harvard, found out that his roommate was Ted Kennedy. So uh, Ted Kennedy, you can say what you want about him, he loved the media, and the media loved him. He was a wonderful guy, I thought, anyway. So we called him up in Washington. We said, can we send somebody down and have you comment on Dudley Shaw Richards? And he said, oh, Dudley Richards. So we did. He went down there. He talked all about it. A sound, nice sound bite. And I put it uh, in my story for Channel 12 on a program I was doing then called Not To Be Forgotten. We ran it once a week, usually on Friday or whatever day of the week the ratings were lowest because uh, they, they got a high, high rating. They, they rate the uh, news shows by every 10 minutes or so. And, uh, so we stuck that on about 6.15 lowest night of the ratings and did pretty well. So Ted Kennedy sent the tape back. <clears throat> and I started looking into Dudley Shaw Richards. He was, a, as I said, he went to Harvard with Teddy. And then he became a great ice skater. He's been skating since he was a child. And he joined the U.S. Olympic ice skating team. And he had a girlfriend named Mirabelle, Mirabelle Owen. She was about 17. She had an older sister. It was a great group of uh, New England area ice skaters. And so they decided they were going to fly to Belgium. 
and uh, take part in the World uh, Ice Skating Championships, not the Olympics at this time. And they all get on there with their parents and their coaches and all the media people and everything. And they flew over to Belgium. On the approach to the Belgian airport, something happened. And the plane crashed and killed the whole group. Killed everybody, including Dudley Shaw Richards. He was 31 years old at the time. And so uh, I, I tracked down his sister, Mary, who lives in Mayence, where a, a lot of the Dudley's people live. That's where he became friendly when he was a child with the Kennedys. And uh, we had to get permission from her to do the story, which was absolutely no problem whatsoever. And I found one of his ice skating partners who remembered him fondly. And it was one of the great tragedies. Uh, in the Framus Journal every morning, they have on this day in history. And um, within the last maybe three months, so sometime during the, the cold of winter, I think this happened in February, there was uh, a little notation saying, on this date, 1961, the uh, ice skating championship team was wiped out in a, in a plane crash. So. But not all of the uh, stories are that tragic. Unfortunately, a lot of them are, but uh, in these books we have stories about train wrecks and uh, shipwrecks, but also characters.